Not until I was 11, and actually before I was 11, I hadn't heard a piece of classical music that wasn't part of our household. You know, we were offered the opportunity to play something, and I just stuck my hand up, so I thought, oh, that would be great. <laughs> Make a change from being in class all day. But little did I know that that was gonna, actually, that was the beginning of a, a new chapter in, in my life. Music brings hope. I mean, music can really soothe, it can really, um, I think it can really heal. It offers you a way to disengage from often the things that are causing you trouble um, and engage in something that's intrinsically hopeful and aspirational. In my particular solo recital for this Hebrides series, I chose works that were inspired by other um, pieces of art photographs, paintings, um, pieces of text, and all my pieces um, revolve around that. And, and I suppose I'm, in a way, trying to f discover that creation, or, uh, well, in my case, recreation process that the composers have gone through. And that's something that I, um, I'm hoping is gonna come through in this program. This next piece is by Georgi Kurtag, the most famous Hungarian composer still alive. He's in his mid-90s and still writing incredible music. This piece is called As Hit, and its translation is literally by faith. Kurtag gives really unusual markings in his music. He thinks very, um, it's very unorthodox. He sometimes asks you to get louder and to get softer at the same time. So the crescendo and the, the diminuendo happening at the same time. So it's almost like a, you know, decrease the volume, but don't decrease the uh, intensity. In this piece, the, there aren't many note lengths, they're just note heads. And the length of the notes is determined by the, the text that you'll see um, on the screen. And I, have to inflect uh, the notes according to the text.
So this piece is by Scottish composer Judith Weir. It's a suite of five um, pieces called Unlocked. She found these uh, a collection of folk songs in the National Library of Congress in Washington. These folk songs from the, the 1930s, they were mainly uh, sung by black prisoners in southern jails. And she chose five of them and put them to this music. So the first one I'm going to play is called Make Me a Garment. And this was um, sung by a man in a tuberculosis ward who had lost, his, had lost his voice and he could barely speak, so he was sort of whispering this song. And the second one I'm going to play is called The Keys to the Prison, and it's a, a fantasy, really, about a, a, young, a young boy who's in jail and imagines that he's going to escape. And he uh, says to his mum, I'm, I'm going to escape, and she said, how, how can you possibly do that? when the warders have got the keys round their neck. Um, but he's determined, so it's a sort of frantic um, trying to get out of there. And you can hear um, the doors slamming in the, in the prison. You hear this at the beginning. Um, that comes a few times through it. And then the little theme uh, is the, the jangling keys. You hear that going through. That forms a theme. And that theme comes back at the very end of this fast music, but in a very different treatment. And she paints this beautiful picture of this, uh, this sort of loneliness and the poignancy in this cell, this, this solitary nature of it, with a sound that she gets with artificial harmonics, which sounds like a harmonica or a mouth organ playing. This is Judith Weir's Unlocked.
Hebrides is 30 years old and um, Chamber Rocks of Europe is 40 years old. The musicians that I met in the Chamber Rocks of Europe and in the SCO, that's a big network of wonderful musicians and I used that to help uh, build Hebrides Ensemble. I wanted to do a lot more new music and I wanted to do it in a way that I could be a little bit more in control of. I don't mean to be a, a, a sort of, you know, a, a dictator uh, in that sense, but I had certain values that I wanted to instill in how music, new music in particular, was, was performed. And I wasn't able to do that prior to um, setting up Hebrides Ensemble. And then when I did, it meant that I had a bit more um, say in, you know, what music was being played, but also how it was being performed, how it was being prepared, how much care was taken over it. And I was able to, in a way, create a platform for a lot of like-minded musicians to come and join me in just the, the joy of music and the joy of making music and looking after music, especially music of people who are no longer with us. And we need to look after all of that and we need to create new music. David Fennessy, Irish composer. He's written a piece called Five Hofer Photographs. Photographs by Evelyn Hofer. Um, and she took these photographs in Dublin in the 60s. And I'm gonna play two movements. One is Girl with Bicycle and I'm going to play you the other one later, and that's called Mountjoy Square. Um, this girl with a bicycle, you see the girl with a bike that's really far too big for her. Um, huge wheels and, and the spokes. And Dave has um, really brought this picture to life um, with some lovely effects. So the, the spokes, if you like the silver spokes, I hear the silver sound that he gets with harmonics. This very high, silvery sound. He gets the, the turning of the wheels with this um, arpeggiated figure in the, uh, with the bow. Going over the strings in a circular manner. And I imagine this little girl um, really trying to ride this bike and having several goes at it before she finally conquers it.
programming for Hebrides Ensemble is something I really enjoy, but just for the sheer variety of it, because we are a, a, a mixed ensemble and we're not a fixed ensemble either, that we can go from, you know, right down to two, right up to 25, you know, beyond the symphonietta uh, size. We work with singers, actors, dancers, directors, um, you know, so the, 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 the palette is, is big. And for me, as, as someone who can choose from that palette, I mean, it's a real, real privilege. And it's one of the challenges that I really enjoy. If we had a, a group, for instance, of fixed um, instrumentation, um, that would be it. That we, we'd, we'd have to, well, we could develop new work, which we would do, of course, and a lot of groups do that very successfully. Um, but we'd be limited to what's been written for that group in the past and, you know, some new stuff that could be created. And the joy of Hebrides Ensemble is that we can create different groups um, from the range of players that, um, that we have that are involved in the ensemble. And for me, that's just uh, that's the real joy of putting those unusual combinations of players and people together with unusual combinations of instruments as well. I'm going to play an extract from Britain's third cello suite. Benjamin Britten wrote three cello suites for the great Russian cellist Mitislav Rostropovich. And this is the Pasakalia from the, the third that you're going to hear. Britain constructed this piece on Russian themes in his dedication to Rostropovich, I suppose. And one of the themes is the Kontakion, or the hymn for the dead, the hymn for the departed. And he bases this movement on that. With the rest of the themes, he writes variations on each theme, which is quite a normal thing to do. But what's a little bit more unusual is that Britain turns that around. And he gives you the variations first and then plays the themes at the end. So I'm going to play you the, the theme from the Kontakion uh, now, that you can hear it. And I'm going to show you how he constructed the, the Passacaglia on that. Here's the Contachion. So that's the Contachion. And he takes these notes at the beginning of uh, the Contachion. These five notes. And he moves them onto another string, those, those five notes. So you get the same intervals, but on a different string. And then he builds it from that. So that's the, a lower voice. Always when I'm playing on the low C string, that's the this, um, contachion theme. And then he adds another voice to that, a more treble voice, and they have a dialogue. So you get a little bit of the lower voice, then the higher voice, then the, the lower voice, and so on. And it's like a, a discussion or an argument. The discussion becomes quite heated in the middle. And as it builds up, he gradually begins to allow the voices to interrupt one another and they come together um, on top of one another, if you like, really. Um, and there's a lot of uh, tension built up through that.
We are lucky in Scotland with the um, amount of different ensembles that we have and they're groups that I respect for different, different reasons. You know, they all have their horrible phrase, the USP, um, and, and Hebrides does as well. And I think that we are lucky that we're all here at the moment and that we're all batting in the same direction, but in, in, in different ways, if, if you like. And I think that's really important for culture to develop and to have breadth. The future for Hebrides Ensemble, I want to be full of new, new horizons. I want, I want to continue to develop. I think what we've been doing in Hebrides is quite an organic process. And I think it makes sense to me where we've, where we've been and where we're going. And that is to continue to support um, the musical community in Scotland and to take that further afield and show people what we're doing here um, and that we have a, a real richness in our culture here. And now we come back to Dave Fennessy, his five Hoffer photographs. And this is the final one, the fifth movement, called Mountjoy Square. And in the photograph you see this square in, in Dublin and it's covered in snow um, and the remarkable thing about it is really there's, there's no one in the square, it's, it's empty of people. And he, Davis called this Mountjoy Square in memoriam, so there's obviously someone missing in this uh, photograph. And he paints this in a quite memorable way which you're just about to hear.
This piece is by Lyle Cresswell, New Zealand composer, um, who lives in Scotland. And it's called Atta, which is Norse for eight. It's made up of eight movements, and I'm going to play the final movement, Conforza. The piece is based on paintings by Maurizio Bottarelli, or inspired by them. And they have a um, incredible energy and seething quality to them. And I think you have been no doubt when you've heard this that um, Lyle really conveys that here. This is the eighth movement, Conforza. Thank you. 